everyone, I'm Georgia and this is The Sound of Georgia. Let's talk about Sound of Music's I Want Song. You all know what a musical's I Want Song is. It's when the protagonist bursts into song and tells us who they are, what they want, and why they want it. And it's usually one of the first songs in the show. Now what is the I Want Song in Sound of Music? Think about it. Keep thinking about it. Are you doubting yourself? It seems simple enough. The obvious answer is the title song. After hearing Maria sing that song, we know that she is a free spirit who loves to sing and the mountains are very special to her. Using the logic of the I Want song, what does Maria want? To be able to be free to go to the mountains and sing? The problem with following this logic is that she's already doing that. And it's not that musicals were different back then and that the I Want song is newer. My Fair Lady has an I Want song. The Boyfriend has an I Want song. When you're writing stories, there's this thing called want versus need. And those two things are obviously not the same thing. What you want is pretty obvious, but what you need is much deeper. What you need is more the reason behind what you want. What you need is what you really want. Maria wants to be a nun, but the reason she wants that is because she wants a place to belong. And what she needs is to figure out that the place she belongs doesn't have to be a convent. I Have Confidence could be considered an I Want song, but I'm hesitant to say it is the I Want song because it didn't exist in the original production and was written specifically for the movie. So, going through the list, what songs do we have after the title song? And we're going by the musical's timeline because that came first. If there's not an I Want song in the original musical, does an I Want song written specifically for the film actually count as the I Want song. Anyway, the songs in the musical after the title song are My Favourite Things, which Maria and the Mother Abbas sing. I don't think so. That song's far more a pick-me-up song to bolster your confidence. To bolster your confidence and make you happier. Do re mi? Nope. Here's the weird thing. The next one is 16 going on 17 and that in a way is an I Want Song. But if it's an I Want Song, it's Liesl's I Want Song. And we're looking for Maria's I Want Song. So next up we have Lonely Goathead. Nope. After this in the musical is where we first meet Elsa and Max. Kind of like 16 going on 17 and Liesl. How Can Love Survive is a bit interesting. How Can Love Survive definitely has I Want elements. After hearing that we know that Elsa really wants to marry Georg. But there it is again, not Maria. After that we've got the reprise of Sound of Music that the children are singing after Maria and the captain have had their argument. Now, could an I Want song actually be diegetic? Or have a diegetic reprise? After this we have So Long Farewell and then Climb Every Mountain and then Intermission. That wipes out pretty much all the songs in Act 2 to be the I Want song. Now that's not to say I Want songs have to be one of the earliest songs 100% of the time. Look at Hamilton. Yes, there's obviously my shot, but if you think about it, there's another one. One that doesn't actually happen until halfway through Act 2, the room where it happens. The reason this song works as an I Want song so late in the show is because it's not Alexander's I Want song. It's Bert's. I've made a whole video about who is Hamilton's protagonist, because that is something you can debate for a while. But there's no question that Alexander is the nucleus of the show. But no matter who you want to say the protagonist is, we're following his life, which means he needs to be the one to have the I Want song. Which is one of the reasons Room Where It Happens works. Because Alexander has already had an I Want song. It also works because we, as the audience, know the ending of the story. We know that Bert's never going to get what he wants, but at this point in the story, he doesn't. Sound of Music is solely Maria's musical. She's not a Manic Pixie Dream Girl, because Manic Pixie Dream Girls can't have character arcs. And the story is based off this real life woman's memoir. If you had to pick one character for Sound of Music protagonist, it's Maria. So let's talk more about Julie doing Rogers and Hammerstein. In Rogers and Hammerstein Cinderella, In My Own Little Corner definitely has some I Want elements. But I think the real I Want song is impossible. In My Own Little Corner is where Cinderella sings about the daydreams that she finds comfort in given her circumstances. Circumstances that while she doesn't like she has made peace with 
and the daydream she sings about in that song are her escape. But by the time we get to Impossible, she has a clear, obvious want to go to the ball. I officially wish, officially, I officially wish and wish and wish all those things I said about the pumpkin and the mice and the rats. Impossible. Just the same, I'm wishing it. In My Own Little Corner has a lot of similarities too. The title song in The Sound of Music. Yes, our heroine is singing about the things she wants, but the things she already has in some capacity. Even the love song, an ordinary couple in particular. Maria and Gail go singing about how they want to be together. But they already are, and they know that. But what is the I Want song in Sound of Music? Well, it is the title song. Again, it's obvious, and it's only when you start thinking about it that you begin to doubt yourself. But then you keep thinking about it, and it circles all the way back to obvious again. But the reason you second guess it in the first place is because it's not an I Want song for Maria. Maria is singing about what she loves most in the world. But the lyrics themselves don't suggest any sort of want in the way other I want songs do. She's convinced that what she loves most in the world is something she already has, and what she wants is something different. But this is what she subconsciously wants. She's telling us she wants something in Sound of Music, but at this point she doesn't realise that it's what she wants. Singing this song to us is telling us what she really wants. In her mind, she wants to be a nun. But the fact that she's always escaping to the hills proves that she doesn't. She doesn't quite realise it at the time, but what she's telling us is that she wants a world where she can do this without having to worry about any of the consequences. And it's even more clear in the musical with the opening lines that they cut for the movie. My day in the has come to an end, I know, a star has come out to tell me it's time to go, but deep in the dark green shadows are voices that urge me to stay. She knows that she needs to go. She knows that her time in the mountains is up. And even if the rest of the song doesn't, those two lines alone tell us what she wants. She wants to be a nun, but she wants to be a nun and still be able to run away to the hills whenever she can. Which means she needs to realise that there's somewhere she can belong that's not a convent. If you just watch the movie and don't know about those opening lines, you might not even know that. Yes, you could say I Have Confidence is an I Want song but it's not THE I Want song. THE I Want song in Sound of Music is the title song. And by the end of it, we know Maria more than she knows herself. And that's everything. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know, what do you think? Do you think that's why the I Want song in Sound of Music is the way it is? Or do you have another theory? Or do you think the I Want song is something completely different? And what do you think for 16 going on 17 and how can love survive? Would you count them as I want songs for different characters? Let me know. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my video next week. So long, farewell!